Number 48. Carbon tetrachloride was formerly used in fire extinguishers for electrical fires. It is no longer used for this purpose because of the formation of the toxic gas phosgene, which is Cl2CO. Write the Lewis structures for carbon tetrachloride and phosgene. Okay, so they want us to write the Lewis structures for carbon tetrachloride and phosgene. Lewis structures are always coming from covalent molecules, which means that they're all nonmetals and we are sharing electrons. So that's the single, double, and triple, triple bonds. So they gave us a, a formula for phosgene, right, which is Cl2CO, but they didn't give us a formula for carbon tetrachloride. So we should know what carbon tetrachloride is. Now, I see automatically that I see tetra, right? And that should be ringing a bell, right? That's our prefixes when we name our covalent compounds. And what was tetra again? Tetra is the number four. So they're telling me that I have a carbon that's attached with four chlorides or four chlorines, right? And chlorine we know is Cl. So in this case, carbon tetrachloride is C, because there's just one. It didn't say dicarbon or tricarbon. It just said carbon, so that means one. But then it said tetrachloride, so this is CCl4. Now, since we know that, we should be able to draw the Lewis structure for tar carbon tetrachloride. All right, so who is the central atom? It's always the most electronegative. So between carbon and chlorine, which one is the less electronegative out of the two? Well, remember your electronegativity trend, right? From left to right, electronegativity will always increase. And as you go from top to bottom down a group, electronegativity will always decrease. And since carbon is over here and chlorine's over here and we increase from left to right, that means that carbon would be the less electronegative. So carbon would be in the middle, surrounded by the four chlorines. So let's get to it. So that's what the first step you should do is just write the blueprint for your atom. So in this case, I have carbon that's surrounded by four chlorines. So one, two, three, and four. And now draw the valence electrons around each atom. So for carbon, there's four valence electrons. And for chlorine, there are seven valence electrons. So you'll put four dots around carbon and seven around chlorine. So I'll put one, two, three, four. And then for chlorine, I'll put seven each. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then last one, we got it over here. I'll put the two dots over here. Okay, perfect. Now we bond only single bonds between the atoms. And that comes from one electron from one atom and then the other electron from the other. So for here, here's one electron. It will bound will bind with this one. And then I'll make a single bond down here. I'll make a single bond over here and electron to electron, there's my single bond. Now I just check the outer atoms for the octet and the octet means eight electrons. So in this case, we have chlorine and how many electrons does chlorine have? Two, four, six, and now it has eight because that double, that single bond is shared between the chlorine and the carbon. So that one has eight, that's good. This chlorine has two, four, six, eight electrons. So that has the octet. This chlorine has two, four, six, eight. And if we just check the last one over here, two, four, six, eight. So that's all good. Now let's just check for carbon. Carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons. So everybody has the octet rule. So this would be the structure for carbon tetrachloride. So that's the first part. Now they just want us to know what the Lewis structure is for phosgene. And they were nice enough to give us what phosgene is. I'll put that just over here. Phosgene is Cl2CO. Now, which one do you think is the central atom? Is it going to be chlorine, carbon, or oxygen? Well, let's look. Chlorine's over here, oxygen's over here, and carbon's over here. Remember, the least electronegative one goes in the center. So if electronegativity increases from left to right, these two, oxygen and chlorine, shouldn't be it. Carbon would be the least electronegative. So I'm going to put carbon in the middle, and just try to make it as symmetrical as possible. There's a total of three atoms, two chlorines and one oxygen that needs to be bound to the carbon. So I'll put the 
two chlorines down here, and I'll put the oxygen up top here. And now we just put the valence electrons. We draw the valence electrons around each atom. Each carbon has four, oxygen has six, and chlorine has seven valence electrons, so you'll put those dots around each of them. So I'll put one, two, three, four around the carbon, seven around the chlorine, just like last time. So that's that. And then this one should have seven as well. And then oxygen should have six. So I'll just put two, two, and two. It really doesn't matter where you put them, just as long as you have the respective correct number of valence electrons around each atom. And now we will bond only single bonds between the atoms. So I have one electron from chlorine here binding with that one electron. That's gonna make a bond and we'll do a single bond here. So now let's just check. This chlorine has two, four, six, eight. So that's the octet, that's good. This chlorine has two, four, six, eight. So that's good. But now this carbon has two, four, six, seven electrons. That's not good. And if we saw oxygen, oxygen has two, four, six, seven as well. So what are we gonna do? Oh, well, these electrons look a little lonely, right? So that will just form a bond. And now carbon will have two, four, six, eight electrons, and oxygen will have two, four, six, eight electrons. And it is all good. So that is the drawing for phosgene. And that's it. They just wanted to know the two Lewis structures. Number 48 is done. Hopefully this helped. If you guys need more practice with Lewis structures, there's tons of problems before this one that we do Lewis structures. So there's so many practice problems. You guys can just practice on your own time. I will be there for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Click the subscribe button. We're almost at 100. We're actually one away from 100. Are you going to be that one? <laughs> um, thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next question. See you later.